Let's talk about Battlefield. Battlefield's in a bit of a state at the minute. And um, there's a few things to touch on here. We've had two lead creatives have left the um, Battlefield project in the space of a few months. There's also been a cancelled Battlefield game. And there was a single player game, apparently, which made a lot of people think that they were doing some sort of follow-up to Bad Company, Bad Company 2, um, which is some of the most revered Battlefield games of all time, especially Bad Company 2. Um, where are you at on this? And then we'll talk about the, the future of it. Do EA know what the hell's going on? No. No, they don't, Scott Telford. <laughs> and they haven't seemingly known what the hell they're doing with this franchise for about eight years I was gonna now. Say, yeah. You know, I infamously perhaps enjoyed the launch version of Battlefield 2042. Two, yep. Yeah, I always get those numbers mixed up every <laughs> single time. Any title, 2077. That's it. Anytime a, a title has a number on the end, I will get it mixed up. <laughs> um, yeah, I, and I enjoyed it for what it was, but it was very clear that that game was suffering from some kind of creative identity crisis. Mm. And the moves they made following that game's release, I thought were initially promising, you know, bringing Vince Zampella over from mm. Respawn to act as the kind of, you know, shepherd that sheep, <laughs> shepherd, the, <laughs> shepherd the battlefield sheep into a new direction, and kind of to oversee it, mm -hmm. I thought was a good move, you know, kind of restructuring the team in a way to focus on Battlefield's core principles rather than chasing trends, mm -hmm. I thought was a promising step forward. Putting more games into development that do things differently like the single player games, I thought was a promising development. Mm -hmm. But now in the years since, like you said, we've seen these creative dire directors leave. We've now seen projects canceled and it makes me fear for what Battlefield 2025 is going to be because EA has said the next Battlefield is coming then. Right. And, I, and I just, worry about it. Like, what does EA think Battlefield is, and what does DICE and the other teams working on the franchise want it to be? Because a lot of the leads who worked on, you know, iconic games like Bad Company mm -hmm. and Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, like, they're no longer at that studio anymore. Right. So, going forward, I just want them to make a Battlefield game. Like, just go back to basics for once. People <laughs> loved Battlefield 1. People love Battlefield 2. People mm -hmm. love Battlefield 3. They love the class system. There is a fandom there. But I think this franchise, perhaps more than any other right now, was emblematic of what we've been talking about for mm. the past few weeks in terms of AAA publishers and AAA developers like wanting all of the money and mm. not being um, concerned with what they deem smaller successes. Like EA forever has wanted Battlefield to go toe to toe with Call of Duty. Yes. And even though it's never sold Call of Duty numbers, it's still sold incredibly well. It's mm. still sold like 15, 20 million copies at its peak. And that's nothing to sniff at when no. you have microtransactions on top and you have this you know multiplayer dedicated fan base that will be with you for the entire duration and it's like can we just make a battlefield again <laughs> can we just make one and if people don't like it fair enough here do whatever the hell you want yeah. but i guarantee people will like it the thing i want to touch on is like 2042 felt like they were chasing the remnants of the overwatch model like the operator stuff trying to have like i mean i know every must succeed you can argue maybe they were chasing that or something instead but having like individual characters individual players like take on all these roles as opposed to a cumulative um way that you progress through a match like to me the last time the battlefield turned heads was the operators sorry the um operations mode in Battlefield 1. That was 2016. I know, it's and that was great time. as well. It is a long, long time. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's been such a quick decline. You know, we were just talking about Bethesda and how it only takes one game to get back on top. It was a quick decline for Battlefield yeah. because people love Battlefield 3, people love Battlefield 4. Battlefield 1 kind of rocked the world and how good mm. it was. And then we started the, the decline with Battlefield 5, which really dropped off, and then 2042, which dropped off even further. <laughs> and it's like, how do you go from the peak to the bottom of the barrel in two games? Like, that's what I always wonder. So I have faith that, you know, one great game can mm. rocket them back up. But with all of the turmoil clearly happening behind the scenes, I just, I, I wonder, again, what they want out of this franchise. The thing is that you you play way more COD than I do. Like, I try and keep up with Call of Duty, but I don't play Warzone. And uh, I didn't actually buy Modern Warfare 3. It was the first one I didn't buy in. Yeah. years. Um, but the way Call of Duty is at the minute, every now and then when I see a gameplay clip or I see something, it's like a, car like a Homelander's killing someone or like there's a whole bunch of guest characters, Nicki Minaj is in there, Walking Dead skins, whatever it is. And I see Call of Duty, I see Activision chasing the Fortnite dollar, chasing the brand crossover dollar. And assumedly in that, if it, it depends how much that idea has been normalized in that space. Yeah. But I wonder how much EA are like, oh, we need we need all these crossover deals and we need it to be this multi uh, media behemoth thing. And it can never be World War II because 
old World War boots on the ground stuff because it needs to accommodate all these brand deals. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they navigate that because recently, I think it was an Insider Gaming report mm. suggested that there's going to be a free-to-play Battle Royale mode shipping yes. with the next Battlefield, which, like you said, is very Call of Duty in nature. But I think because Call of Duty is, you know, making that approach of trying to chase the Fortnite crossover mm. um, gimmick of putting, you know, Rick Grimes in there, Ash Williams from the Evil Dead. He you plays know. King Kong. Yeah, Snoop, <laughs> Snoop Dogg's in there, Nicki Minaj is in there. You know, they've got that crossover appeal. Uh, I do think that's left part of the first-person shooter fandom kind of craving for a game that doesn't have that mm. stuff, something that is not necessarily a military simulator or anything like that, not a mil sim, but, you know... Hell, has, that loose proves that it does have an audience, though. That's it, right? Yeah. You, you look on the subreddit, it for Call of Duty Warzone, and while you know I'm I'm actually a fan of those crossover skins and stuff, I think it's fun. Rightly so, some people are like, I just kind of want to play like a modern warfare game. Mm -hmm. I want to play something that is that modern military that has that modern military aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And while Battlefield has never been you know the most hardcore military game, never been the most realistic, it's always had that edge and mm -hmm. always had that reputation over something like Call of Duty. You know, it's a little bit weightier. It's got yeah. the destruction element. Um, it's kind of more focused in on the kind of what would could be described as a more hardcore experience, mm -hmm. even though it's still very casual. So like that's to me, that's the market Battlefield should be aiming mm -hmm. for, because if it does just have a free to play Battle Royale um, experience that is trying to catch that crossover audience that Call of Duty already has, like, you're going to fail because it's Call of Duty. You can be yeah. the best, but if you're also putting Nicki Minaj skins in, people are just going to go, well, Call of Duty's doing that. What are you that, offering me as an alternative? You know? Yeah, that audience is already satiated anyway. Like, no, does anyone want a Battlefield Battle Royale? I like, would, I mean, I would take it. Yeah. I would take it, but it's, they've missed the boat on it yes. by about five years. It like, feels ancient at this to the point. Party. Yeah, and when, when Call of Duty already has such a, a, a huge part of the market mm. when Fortnite is still going strong with a huge part of the market. Like, it's it's a tough market to break into. It absolutely is. I remember when uh, Cliffy B, Cliff Blazinski, Gears of War creator, was talking about trying to get into a certain um, competition space. He was like, the market tends to only have space for two leaders. Um, like that, that back in the day, you know, you had just Sega Nintendo or Street Fighter Mortal Kombat or whatever. And there's obviously more than two, but like the two biggest titans tend to lead the, the way. And at the minute, in this space, it's Call of Duty and Fortnite in regards to the cross-brand, cross stuff yeah and um, they feel like the two titans of like free to play live servers uh, multiplayer shooter stuff um and like yeah the, for me the only way forward would be doubling down on the things that you know which would contrast what the big wigs would want over at ea because it wouldn't be let's do ostensibly a deluxe version of what hell let loose is right now yeah and um, which is in itself what battlefield used to be so like yeah. i don't know how you bring it back in a way that will get the player numbers or like a big enough hit which is i guess why things big lead creatives are abandoning stuff like they're canceling games because the people at the top won't know how the hell it even is anymore. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, various projects get off the ground, then they get canned because they're not going to be big enough. On a wider level as well, I think, you know, EA's approach to live services or even multiplayer games, they don't have the same commitment to it mm. as even an Activision does. Like, I don't necessarily love every Call of Duty season and update, but you know they're always going to have something. You know yeah. those seasons are coming. You know that they've got them in advance. You know there'll be a Halloween event, for instance, or a Christmas event. And <laughs> even when, you know, they do those silly boys crossovers, there are new game modes, there are new skins, there mm. are new ways to play. Like, there, there are plans in motion. You kind of you believe in it as a live service. You don't think it's, like, you couldn't imagine Call of Duty Wars on just ending abruptly. No. Whereas if you look at what EA has done with Battlefield and Battlefront and some of their other live service and multiplayer games, I don't have the confidence that that support will be there in a big way. Like, mm. they've done a good job turning around games like Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 2042. Like, they've supported that game for longer than I thought they would. But the content drops haven't been as substantial as you'd maybe want, and certainly not as substantial as you'd want from a live service game. So even if they launched Battlefield Battle Royale and it was amazing at launch, mm. I'd still be wary about its long-term support because just as Battlefront 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2, was getting into an excellent place, they stopped support. They moved those <laughs> yeah. developers onto the next Battlefield. And that will that happened with Battlefield Five as well. You know, there's EA seems to have a cutoff point, mm. a cutoff point for these live services and multiplayer games in terms of their active support. So I I worry like if you if you launch Battlefield Battle Royale, even if it's well received, mm. even if it gets those numbers, 
I'd still be worried about it surviving beyond two or three years. Um, and yeah, and I, and I think if it sells underneath that or if it doesn't get the same players as a Call of Duty, mm. it might last even less and the content will be even more sparse. That whole thing with Battlefront 2 was fascinating because that game launched in a horrible state. Like all the um, premium currency stuff that had to be gutted out of it. It was under legal investigation. They were potentially being sued or by the Hawaiian, um, a Hawaiian lawyer. There was all that stuff. And then years later, it just became the best Star Wars multiplayer game ever. Like it looks gorgeous. It plays really well, etc. And then like you said, they canned it. And it just felt like this thing of like, okay, we need to polish this back up to the point where people are smiling at it again. Yeah. And then we move on because we need the new unit sales. We need the new, uh, whatever the next step is. But for whatever reason, they didn't double down on the thing that they always say they're aiming for, which is a sustainable life service model. You could have reintroduced monetization to Battlefront 2. Yeah. And maybe, maybe they looked at the metrics and it was like, that's just going to be another press storm and we don't want it and whatever. Um, and maybe the state of the Star Wars IP wasn't strong enough or something like that. But with Battlefield 2042, they did it again. And it's like, you get it back to a point where people are smiling again and yeah. then you just move on from it. You just don't do it properly. Um, and it just feels like such a, a pointless endeavor, like every time over and over again. I think with Battlefield especially, it feels like, yes, they support the games. Yes, they put in new patches, mm. even drop new content, but it always feels like they're just making up for, in a way, what should have been there at launch. Yes. And they get it to the state where it should have been. They add some new content, some new vehicles, uh, some new skins and stuff, and then go, right, okay. But as a player, you're thinking, well, it should have been like that mm. at launch, and then you should have added more on top. And I know mm. video game development's hard, but with DICE especially, this has been the cycle for 10 years. Even a game I love, like Battlefield 4, mm. You know, its servers were absolutely busted at launch. Like, that took a lot of work to get to the game it should be, and now it is, you know, viewed as a complete classic of the franchise. Mm -hmm. But yeah, with Battlefront 2, my brain can still not fathom that they stopped support of that game just as Disney was um, about to release a bunch of Star Wars content. And I know, like you said, maybe the brand wasn't as strong, but in terms of stuff that they then had to pull from, the fact that we didn't get a proper Mandalorian crossover mm. is crazy. The mm -hmm. fact that we didn't have Andor stuff uh, or what else are they bad batch stuff you know all of these things that they had to play with all of these tools in yeah. the toolbox that even if you didn't like the shows or watch the shows would have made great content mm -hmm. tent drops you know new characters new maps they had a big a bigger player player base than ever mm -hmm. and they were like nah <laughs> my Star Wars rule is always that uh, Star Wars in video games is better than Star Wars in live action anyway but yeah, uh, yeah they absolutely could have done